Hello, everybody. I am Sandra Lee, Human Design Specialist, Biofield Tuning Practitioner, and I have one of my bestest friends with me today. This is Alana Heim, and we have been working together for so long. It feels like forever. <laughs> yeah. Because we both do human design related stuff and EFT quantum alignment stuff together. And we really supported each other like on an ongoing basis, what feels like forever. And it's one of the best things ever getting to um, be friends with, relate with, do healing work with Alana. I love Alana's work. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. But just to say that I love Alana. She's just amazing. And we do similar types of work. We both do human design related stuff. She has her taste on it. I have my taste on it. We both do energy healing related stuff that kind of relate. But our perspectives, our approaches are still very different. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that is so amazing about working with different people. You might be doing exactly the same technique, perhaps, but getting completely different benefits and perspectives. So, Alana, welcome. Oh my gosh. And I have to just say, I love you. I don't know how many years it's been, but or how many books it's been, but we've been in three books together. We've been doing human design and EFT, tapping with with each other and supporting each other for so long. And I'm a one three projector, emotional. You're a three five splenic manifester, right? So it's just like these these differences. And then we have the companion channel of the the sixty four forty seven. So it's like <clears throat> we both have inspiration, but differently and see it differently. And I'm gonna like want to go into the depths of the one and the foundation and you're going to want to experiment and and so do I but just so different but it's like it's just like this right it's just like it's so synchronistic and I hope that is inspirational for so many as well just because the world is stuck in lack and scarcity and competition. And usually people are like, Ooh, you do what I do. We can't work together. We can't help each other because you're going to take my clients. And that's exactly what I want to break free of and be more in abundance and prosperity and knowing there's plenty, there's more than enough. There are ways you're going to help clients that differ from me and that we can support each other and our clients together and, that's the win-win. That's that's just fun, and where we're we're at on the planet, but we're moving more and more into as well. Yeah. So part of why we're doing this today is Alana has a workshop coming up on Friday, and I wanted to interview her about that. And the subject of her workshop is what she calls core wounds. I have been talking a lot this month about the foundational separation room. So these are very similar, they're related, and yet they're different. So Alana's work with the gene keys and the core wound is going to complement what I do with the foundational separation wound. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. What yeah, is the, the core wound? The core wound, and in its it's fun because in the gene keys, so this is an, another variation of human design, another variation of the Chinese I Ching, the hexagrams, but ultimately we're looking at a specific sphere in the gene key that's called vocation, but it doesn't say core wound. And you actually have to go through Richard Rudd's Venus sequence to get all the way to that very last sphere to learn that there's a wound there. And that really what you've been unraveling in the Venus sequence to open your heart, to be really connected in your relationships, to be more heart-based, there's a core wound that was seeded when you were in your mother's womb that is there kind of as this, this deep wounding for you personally, but also through your lineage and then for the collective. And this very wound is something that has always happened to you 
for you, at you, and also how you've projected it out upon other people, right? So it ties a little bit to the separation piece. It's different, but they're all correlated. They're all connected. And there's no accidents. Mm -hmm. There's no accidents. So I think Alana and I both agree about this. We haven't talked about this specifically, that the soul chooses the time when they're going to be born so that the planets will be where the planets need to be for that person to have the experiences they're coming here to life to have. Totally. So that's all reflected in the human design chart and in the gene keys. For me and the foundational separation wound, I see this as something that every single human experiences at birth, independent of what's going on with the planets. So I think that what Alana is talking about with this core wound associated with the Venus sequence and all of that helps us understand the specific ways that the person experiences the trauma and the wounding from the separation. I just talk about it from a more general perspective. But Alana's work with the gene keys helps you to understand more of the, oh, this is the why that particular aspect of it shows up for you. So yes. Tell us more. Yes. So, so let's just say from the lens of where you're coming from with the foundational piece, this is that moment of birth, umbilical cord cut, separation already like separation from being all warm and cozy in the womb and now being out into this like big white world we don't even know what it is already being inundated with all of these energies let's just say uh if, if you're in a sterilized hospital room right there's no germs there's like doctors bright lights tools you know what i mean it's already like ah and that's the instant piece that you're talking about of just separation you're taken from mom more and more there are women who are having home births or doing things in their own way where they don't want to be disconnected or separated from their child right because they're bringing in that love and and it helps ease the baby so let's just say from that starting point this core wound there's a line one foundational wound of repression and repression is already the fear inside of you where we learn to repress our deepest fears. And those fears tend to tie to death or whatever aspect within us, this fear that's so deep that we push it down and we try and act like it's not there. Well, we were already afraid in that moment of birth, right? And so that piece already began to be repressed. The next line up, again, we're looking at a hexagram with six lines. This next piece up ties to denial. And the biggest piece that happens is once you let go of your fear, you're angry about it, right? So imagine denial is you're denying the anger, the resentment, the rage that you were taken from your mom. You were already separated at that point. You have all of this energy and emotion, and usually we want to deny it. Deny it happened, deny ourselves, deny others, right? It's this lens that it just kind of is a 360 of blowing out everywhere. The next piece up is the shame that comes, right? So imagine now you're ashamed that you even had the rage, that you even repressed the fear, that you were even disconnected from your mother at that point. So all of this shame starts to come in and shame in the way of being ashamed, being shamed, right? It comes in and it's fascinating because even when you just hear one of these, and maybe you relate to many of them, but they're all inside of each of us. And we all are tied to them in some way because we feel it, we see it. People are projecting these out, right? There, there's this part of ourselves. So when we move up to the fourth line, it's rejection, right? We feel rejected. And the best way to armor ourselves off is to just reject everybody else before they can reject you, right? Reject the shame, reject the denial, the repression, all these pieces, all that just keep funneling through. The fifth line ties to the guilt because now we feel guilty. We feel guilty that we rejected. We feel guilty. We shamed that we denied that we repressed all of these pieces. The guilt comes in 
And really the guilt is not even yours. It's the guilt of all the generations before you. Imagine all, right? Oh, and I just like feel, whew, okay, biofield tuning, right? We got to clear all of this, that there's just like such a heaviness. There's a weight, right? It's literally having that earth or whatever you think is just so heavy on you. It's that burden that we carry. And so that the final sixth line ties actually to separation because now you feel so distant, so separated from everything. Like you don't fit in, you feel separate from God, separate from your friends, your family, your work, your, your body, yourself, whatever it is, it's that separation because of all of the guilt and rejection and shame and denial and repression before it, right? And there's this essence of it being a six line. And as we know through human design, six lines need time and space to evolve into that deep knowing into the deep work. And really what the sixth line is finding is they are all the lines before it, right? And they're not separate. And so to, to kind of start at that separation foundational piece that where you come from and then full circle, it's, it's all encompassing, everything's connected. And it, it's really beautiful to kind of stop and think of, wow, there's, there's one of these wounds in me and in each of us. And as we heal this part of ourselves, we start to heal each other. So on Friday in the workshop, are you going to help us integrate and heal all of this? You're going to start to learn and contemplate and connect with yourself, right? Because there isn't a one and done. Oh, now I have awareness. It's just going to poof heal itself because I will tell you that each of these lines tie to a part of you, maybe usually into a chakra, right? So my line is the rejection piece and I really have to work on opening my heart chakra. And so there are going to be defenses that we all have because there's a part of us that this wound is almost like your very own child. You've learned to protect it physically, emotionally, mentally. Right. So there are going to be many pieces, but the true gift of all of the evolution we're in, where we're ascending, it's where when you can pause in the moment and catch yourself, catch your thought, catch your emotion, catch your reaction and change it because now you're like, ooh, repression. Where am I repressing myself? Oh, I'm just trying to already repress that. Right. You're you're somewhere. And now your your normal reaction is to imme immediately take that emotion and shove it down in that moment. If you can be honest with yourself and say, oh, there's an emotion that wants to come forward. That is healing in itself. You don't have to let it come out. But even you having the awareness that you want to shove it down, you start to change the pattern and all of the aspects of yourself that have been held back up until that point. Awareness always makes a difference. It totally does. Yeah. And for for those of us who are watching this, this is the kind of thing that's really hard to do completely on your own. This is part of why all of these modalities where there's a practitioner who helps to, to get get more perspective get different ideas, different ways of looking at it, different ways of um, noticing that, that get put into the picture. Yeah, because I'm going to see for you what you can't see for yourself. Yeah. Just as much as you see for me what I can't see. And this is why we love each other and we help each other every week because that's the dance, right? Mm -hmm. If I am in denial... I'm already going to deny there's any change needed. I'm going to deny that what you're saying is even relevant. And, and I've seen this in action through energy retreats that I've been to and just seeing the, the fascinating, you have people who are here to help you. But if your core wound is so deep and it is in denial, it doesn't matter the wisdom, the help, the guidance, the energy that's coming in, you've learned to just block it. And once you have that awareness to go, oh my gosh, this is what they're talking about. This is me being in denial. It is very hard to see unless you start having those experiences show up to help you have the awakening to notice 
oh, wow, I really was in denial. Wow, I really felt shamed in this moment. Ooh, I really felt rejected. Because here's the thing, if I feel rejected, my immediate reaction is to get mean and to reject quickly. And I might not even know that I am using body language and my tone is nasty and my words are curt, right? It's, it's fascinating to have people tell you, oh, you're so mean. And it's like, no, I'm not. But in that triggered response where you don't have the awareness, yes, the rejection will come out. And the more that I pause to see it, the more I can help shift it in myself. And then I become more heart-based. My heart opens more, which means even when people are rejecting, I can learn to love them and have the compassion. And that's how healing myself begins to heal others because now I don't have to take it personal. And we know that. We, we learn that in human design. No, don't take it personal. But when you are deeply ingrained in something that has basically been with you since the moment of separation from the womb, it's all you know. It's your heavy conditioning and, and the response that you've learned. Oh. <sighs> yeah. Oh, breathe. Yeah. And, and even talking about it, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. taking this moment to notice in your body. You know, maybe there's something buzzing or there's something heavy or, or constricted. Or if you feel that, that weight of the guilt, you know, there's just all of these different pieces that you're going to start to connect to. And that's really what I want in the workshop is to not just teach, but really have that integrative part of how can you learn to embody this information? Because only you are going to know what your wound feels like and where it resides in you and how it controls you. Because there isn't a book that says, well, every line one is going to have this and every line six is going to have this. That's the beauty of the jinkies. It's your journey. It's contemplation and action. Right? It is not me telling you what to feel, but you to go inward and notice and start to have the awareness of what it does feel like for you. So for people who are in your workshop, how is their experience going to shift or change? Yeah. So what I've already found with clients, when I plant the seed, even just saying, oh, Sandra, you're a line six. You have the wound of separation. And maybe we just talk a little. But with my clients, it's like there's already this, like that sigh of, of deep knowing right? Because half the battle is your, your mental blocks are already going to prevent you from ever seeing this. Your emotional responses. Again, these are all what you learned as teenagers, as middle schoolers, as elementary, as little kids, right? These are, these are patterns that when you can even go back in time to look at how did you react? Where did you learn this? But just saying it and talking to a client and mentioning it, it's like that knowing of, I do that. That is my response. That is my reaction. That's where they can already start to shift because that awareness opens up within mm -hmm. and then you can start to see the pattern. So, so that's my intention is really for the people who participate in the workshop. They learn about this firstly, because if you just go pull your gene keys chart, you're not going to know where it is. You're going to go, okay, I heard about there's a core wound, but where is it? Right. It, it's, it's hidden. And it's a part of a whole process. But one of the things I've realized is I like to share the secrets and give you the wormhole. Um, that's part of my own core wound of vocation of the 26. And I've really seen that if people just at least had that blip of awareness from the start, it can already start to open so that you don't feel like, oh, wait, I have to go through this whole sequence first to even get to that jewel. You can already start to see the end in mind and begin to allow it to awaken in the way that's best for you. So are you going to give people in the workshop um, something written so they can remember these things? I, and I will have slides. Mm -hmm. And I've already started handing out the Gene Keys chart, which is a little blurb of Here's your vocation. Here's your jinky shadow, jinky gift, jinky city. Here's the wound. 
And at first I didn't, I didn't want to quite like share it yet, but there's a part of me that's like, nope, let me just share it because maybe there's already something that starts to shift before the workshop, something that awakens. And I've already had one person say, I don't know what these mean. And I don't know how to contemplate. And I don't know what, you know, how to sit with this. And that's okay. Because that's the, the real gift of the gene keys. It's contemplation on a deeper level. And sometimes like if we're really stuck in our heads, we don't know how to do that because we're like, okay, I need all the information, right? And, and I'm speaking to you and myself because this is what we do where we love information and we just want to digest it all. And I really want it to be more of the drip, you know, and give you just the little bit. And really what I noticed because she she's a line one repression, that deep fear and uncertainty was already bubbling up. And it was like, oh, just that that's already the work, right? That's already, you tried to sit and contemplate and you couldn't figure it out. And it already was causing you to be like, ah, and, and all the terror and fear kind of rising up. That's what you repress. That's what we don't even notice because we try and act like, oh, I'm okay. But these different parts of ourself are going to show up. So be gentle with yourself. Allow whatever needs to come up, whether there's emotions, some limiting beliefs, maybe even some physicality, stuff in the body. Those are your cues and clues to what's really going on. And that's how you start to know yourself, like truly know yourself that even if I gave you all the written and told you all the stuff, that's my perspective. That's my influence. And what I want is for you to get what you need from your own experience. So for those of you watching, what I hear Alana saying is that it's not poof, you're going to have all of the awareness. I mean, we've been doing this stuff for, you know, over 10 years. And it continually evolves. Layers. Oh, oh, these little things pop up over time. So just to know that what we're talking about is opening up just like into a new journey that you get to experience. Yeah, but that, that core wound, let me just leave this last piece is it's tied to the vocation. It's tied to your work. And you always hear people say, you have to turn your mess into your message, right? That is the core wound is the mess. And your greatest gift is when you heal that part of yourself, you become the wounded healer, right? And not, you're not the wounded victim anymore. But your message is exactly how you put it out in the world for what you're here to do because you've already had to do it, right? And the stuff that we try to hide for them and act like we don't have any issues, that's the very piece where the light is just ready to come bursting forth because that's your gift. And the more we try and repress and deny and shame and reject and guilt and separate ourselves from that piece, you will not fully bloom into the flower of your vocation until you at least have the awareness that there's a seed within that core wound that is ready to flourish at some point, right? It's, it's the journey. Yes. So for those of you watching, if you find this intriguing, then sign up for Alana's workshop. The link to the workshop registration is going to be with the video. Um, and I imagine it will also be available recorded after. Totally. Yes. Yeah. So even if you watch this long after Friday has passed, the workshop will be available to you. So um, anything else that you want to say about how to connect with you or? Yeah, you can find me at prosperityalignment.com. And the, the big piece, right, gene keys, human design, it's all tied to astrology. So I will need your birth date, birth time, birth location so that I can run your chart and have the information. And one of the, the fun parts for me when I teach is I'm not going to teach to everybody generically. It's like I already have my list of everybody's wounds, and like which sphere, which hexagram it's in and which line they have. And so to me, it's, it's even if you can't be present live on the call, I still teach to you as if you're there. And because I have the information, why wouldn't I share this and be like, okay, Sandra, you're this. And then this person is this because 
it's it's how we also start to see that we're not separate within the group, but it all ties together. So whatever questions you have, your experiences, they are so helpful and impactful for the whole. And remember what you're healing within you already starts to ripple out into the collective. And so sometimes when we feel like we're separated in the big wide world, we start to feel indifferent. Like I, who am I to make a difference? There's nothing I can do to help change the planet. The truth is it, it comes from within you. So whatever you're working on to create for yourself, it's already impacting the whole. So it's powerful. So your questions and your experiences, like share them, not just in the class, but out in the world, right? It makes people recognize, oh, I'm not alone. Oh, you're going through that too. And what I know is most of us repress all of it. We don't want people to hear the negative or the bad or the stories. And yet they help us to shift and go into a new direction. And then it empowers others to do the same. Empower ourselves, empower others. Yes. Well, so now you know watching how wonderful Lana is. <laughs> Thank you for shop this Friday. Yes, exploring your core wound through the gene keys. So again, it is using the gene keys. It is going into your core wound. It may be the same as others in the class, others in your family. And that's okay because then you're going to start to have a new compassionate way to talk to them, to be with them, to even when they're in their reaction, you're going to know how to keep your heart open or that's what you're going to start evolving towards, right? Is, is seeing that and being responsive rather than reactive. <sighs> Thank you, Alana. And thank you out there for watching. It was wonderful having you here. Turn up the flame that feeds your magic. Breathe. Mm -hmm.